House of Cards is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're listening to House of Cards. Today, the game is different. I want to gamble. Gambling is a very serious business. Is that clear? Hi, everyone. This is Ashley Adams. Welcome to House of Cards. I'll be your host for this hour. We have a very interesting guy who's written a very good book. It's called Gangsters to Governors. It's the story of gambling in America, especially as it relates to statewide legalization of different forms of gambling. The name of the author is David Clary. We're going to be talking to him about how it is he wrote this book and the contents in it, as well as his predictions about what's going to happen with sports betting in the United States. Stay tuned. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-297-9788. 800-297-9788. Psst. Yeah, you. Come here. Haven't you heard? We don't need to hide anymore. Now, we can shop privately for adult products at adamandeve.com. They've got massage oils, lingerie, and lots more we can't mention here. Use offer code SPICE404. They'll give you 50% off almost any one item. Three free DVDs, free mystery gift, and free shipping. That's 50% off, free shipping, and more. Private shopping starts at adamandeve.com. You're listening to House of Cards. Where was the house? Where was the house of cards? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to House of Cards. I'm Ashley Adams, your host, and we are here with David Clary. David has won, has won. David has written 
a, you can see my head is in gambling. He's written a new book. It's a wonderful book. It's called Gangsters to Governors, The New Bosses of Gambling in America. I've read most of it, not all of it. But what I have read, which is the first 150 pages or so, are fascinating, well detailed. And David is with us now. David, are you there? Yes. Good. So let me get yes, at it. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to get at your background first and let our listeners know that you know of what you speak. So give us a thumbnail sketch of your background and how it is you came to write Gangsters to Governors. Sure. And thank you so much for having me on, Ashley. Uh, I, I've heard, I've, uh, I'm a journalist in San Diego. I've been a uh, newspaper editor for about 20 years and uh, I also worked in Cleveland, Ohio. And I, I, I just missed uh, writing. I, uh, as an editor, you, 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 edit, you edit other people's work, and I just uh, was interested in taking on a writing project of my own. And I've always been uh, fascinated by gambling. Um, I myself am a, I would consider myself a light gambler. I, I uh, play with slot machines, and I've been to Vegas a few times since I've been in California. I visit our local Indian casinos uh, on occasion. Um, but for me, it's more, I'm just interested in the drama of casinos and lotteries and, um, uh, paramutual betting. Uh, we have a beautiful racetrack here at Del Mar. Um, and I, the more I looked into, uh, the history of gambling and why, uh, why it's expanded to the extent it has, it just got me deeper and deeper and more interested in finding out more about it. So when you research gambling, you learn about people like Denny Binion, uh, Buzzy Siegel, uh, people like Steve Wynn, just really fascinating characters. Um, so the more I, the more I researched it, the more, um, I, I just, I just love doing it. So it took me about six years in all, uh, including all the research time. I visited, you know, the UNLV's archives and, uh, consulted hundreds of books and, uh, uh, oral histories. And, um, so that's how I came up with a book and, yeah, it's I really, very impressive. really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the topic. I got to say, I mean, a good tenth of the volume of your book are the notes in the back, which show the incredible yeah. research that went into it. I mean, really, it it's a good. Maybe it's even a fifth of the book. It's the last. I don't know. 50, 60, 70, 80 pages are the acknowledgments, the bibliography, and the notes. Very impressive. Let me ask yeah. you this. Did you have sure. a difficult time getting access to uh, any of the governors and the other uh, people that you quote? I mean, did you actually get to meet and talk to them? Yeah, I did. Uh, the, the one governor I was able to speak with was the uh, the former governor of Iowa, Terry Branstad. Yes, yes. And uh, he was he was very interesting because he uh, he was actually the longest serving governor in American history, and he was governor of Ohio, of Iowa uh, when they uh, first authorized uh, riverboat gaming. They, well, Iowa was the first uh, state in modern American history to have uh, riverboat casinos. So I was he was actually a really interesting person to talk to because he was there when that happened and. Uh, he was pretty reluctant in the beginning, but he realized that, you know, the state had just approved a lottery and the people, the citizens wanted the uh, riverboat gambling, so he went along with it. Um, so he was the only governor I spoke to. I spoke to a few other people um, who are experts in problem gambling. That's certainly a side effect of our expanded casino nation is we have uh, more cases of problem gambling, so I wanted to learn more about that because uh, that's... Uh, Certainly, a uh, that certainly goes along when you have more uh, more casinos and more you know online betting is more prevalent now than it was sure. you know, years ago. If you have more gambling, so, uh, you're going to have more problem gambling. There's no question about that. Absolutely. So I absolutely I was very intrigued by what looks to be the ebb and flow of legalized gambling in the United States. I mean, you did a lot of deep research. Uh, you didn't have to do primary sources because it's fairly well-covered ground, but you do point out how lotteries were used to uh, fund the United States. And I'm wondering if you see the pendulum swinging forward or backward now. Do you think there's going to be a retrenchment, or do you see further expansion? I, I really see further expansion. Uh, you know, I think one one thing to look out for, as your, your listeners probably know, there's a, a Supreme Court is hearing a case that could break open uh, legalized uh, sports betting. 
across the country right now. It's single game uh, sports betting is really only in Nevada and a couple other states. Uh, but the, the, they're hearing a case uh, this term that could very well open up to any other state that chooses to have it. Um, so I, that's um, that's a big thing to look out for, and I think that's it's hard to predict what the court's going to do. But uh, but it, it just feels like that the ground is really shifted on that issue, and even the commissioner of the NBA has said that he wants to see a you know legalized uh, gambling, and then we have the presence of uh, daily uh, daily sports. Uh, Online sports leagues, and so I, I think I think you're going to you're going to see a further expansion of it. I think that you know the states want to protect their revenue; they they rely on this gambling revenue for their budgets, and it's built into their budgets, and they want to preserve that and expand it uh, by any means they can. So I I, I definitely see it sw- swinging uh, toward more expansion. Yes, I I think it very well may. Listeners, we're going to cut away. We'll be back after a quick break. seniors with Medicare. This is an important announcement. Did you know you may qualify for a monthly Social Security rebate? Did you know you may qualify for a $0 monthly premium? That's right. You may qualify to get $135 added back to your Social Security check each month. Just call the Medicare Benefits line to get your options. It's a free call. You may also qualify for $0 premiums, dental coverage, vision coverage, hearing coverage, and prescription drug coverage. With this type of plan, you don't need Medicare supplement insurance. Call now because you deserve to get the most from your Medicare benefits, including a rebate to your Social Security check each month. Agents are standing by with free information regarding Medicare benefits. It's a free call with no obligation, but it could mean big savings for you. Call the Medicare Benefits line now to see if you're eligible for a Social Security rebate. Call 800-574-6770. 800-574-6770. This is House of Cards Radio with Ashley Adams. Now, I do some other stuff, but poker, that's the thing I do best. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to House of Cards. This is Ashley Adams, your host. House of Cards is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19, that's D-R-I-N-K-19, at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. We're talking with David Clary, who is the author of Gangsters to Governors, The New Bosses of Gambling in America. What's interesting to me about the early chapters of your book that I read carefully was that you depict the pre-legalized gambling world in the United States where there was tons of illicit gambling, whether it was numbers or whether it was the pool rooms where they did uh, the racetrack uh, gambling on the wire and the like. What's interesting to me is legalization, both with OTB and with state lotteries that largely replaced the numbers, they did what they were supposed to do Uh, and that's something i never really thought of until i read it i mean the promoters of otb off-track betting especially in new york said look we have all this illegal gambling going on people betting illegally on horse races away from the track 
the opponents of gambling said, well, it's different betting away from the track and betting on the track. If you legalize it, it will expand it. It will be worse. There'll be more. It won't stop anything. It'll still uh, be a lot of criminals involved. But in fact, really, the legalization of OTB, at least from what I read in your book, greatly diminished the amount of illegal off-track betting that took place. It largely replaced the uh, bookies that hadn't, they didn't replace the bookies because they still did sports betting, but they replaced them as people that handled bets for horse races. It did raise a ton of revenue for the states, uh, and it did control it and help to some extent ensure a more honest distribution of money to the gamblers themselves. And the same thing with the lottery, right? I mean, from what I read in your book, oh, it destroyed the, the whole number running industry. Do I, did I read that correctly, and do you think there are implications for sports betting? Because, you know, the people... Yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, your insights are, are, are spot on. Uh, I think that's whenever you have an unregulated market like you have now with uh, sports betting, and 99% of sports betting is illegal uh, in the United States because it's only legal in Nevada, really. Three other states have it, but it's parlay system, so it's not really a traditional sports book. Um, so that's, and you know, you can look, you make the same parallel to online poker. Uh, you know, that, that was, uh, it, those companies were offshore companies. And so it, what that does is it engenders, uh, uh, money laundering and, uh, fraud, uh, wire fraud and bank fraud. Um, uh, so I, I think we've just seen in history with gambling, whenever there's a form of betting that's, illegal and the government tries to crack down on it, it re- really what it does is it just drives it underground and it creates uh, a climate for corruption. And it and, and, the, and the revenue doesn't go, the states get no revenue from it. it only it, The revenue goes to the crime syndicates or the criminals that are that are backing the enterprise. Right. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, uh, I think these un- unregulated markets are, uh, are, have been a real problem in history when it comes to gambling. It raises a question for me, David, that I, uh, you know, I'd like to ask you. I know you're not a political scientist. You're a reporter. You report the facts that you find. But I'd like you to take the next step, perhaps. When I read about the politicians who have opposed the legalization of gambling, and when I look at what happened with the UIGEA, I often wonder if there is some connection between their opposition to gambling and those who benefit by having gambling remaining illegal, uh, the mobsters, the criminals, you know, organized crime. And I wonder if in your research you ever saw any connection that might tend to support the thesis that there is a criminal element that wants to keep gambling Uh illegal so they can keep their revenue stream coming in. Did any of your research indicate that there may be some connection? Uh, That's a really interesting uh, point. I I, I didn't see that, at least in the modern America. That may may have been the case uh, years ago when protection money was paid to uh, local sheriffs or uh, or, or local uh, mayors. But um, I I didn't see that in uh, in sort of, I would say the last 50 years, uh, I think the, I think the, the, the governors who oppose, uh, gambling, I think it's more, I think gambling still has, uh, a, a little bit of, uh, it, it's a little bit of a for, forbidden fruit, you know, a vice. Uh, I think there are still some people that can, that see it as something that's not, the government shouldn't be involved in. It's, it's like, you know, they look at it like tobacco or, or, uh, Alcohol, you know, it's just so. That even though even though gambling is is really uh, mainstream now, and you, see, you know, we have in San Diego, there's ten casinos here, and there's well, you can get my lottery ticket in any any Seven Eleven, and the states uh, the state pushes the lottery or runs the lottery. I still think there are still some politicians that are that just are uncomfortable with government being involved in something that they see as a vice. Right, but it's, um, so I think that's that. Yes, unfortunately, I was hoping that you were going to say, oh, absolutely, it's a known fact now that the mob <laughs> is behind the... Uh, it, it's awfully tough for me, though, to justify, and now I'm, I'm venturing into just uh, political opinion, 
but it seems awfully hard mm-hmm. to justify keeping sports betting illegal when there is so much betting all over the place. Uh, the revenue mm-hmm. from sports betting is going to uh, the underworld, and the genie is out of the bottle. So who are we fooling? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Who are we fooling now? People can go online and bet as much as they want on sporting events. Why not have betting parlors like they have in England and other parts of the world? I guess that's yeah, your... and that's one. And that's, go ahead. That, yeah, that's a point, and that's that's sort of a larger point I make in the book. And what I'm, what I try to do with the book is to look at all the major forms of gambling, and then connect them to tell a larger story of gambling's legalization in America. You know, you, so you start off with the, the paramutual betting at racetracks in the 1930s. That's really the first time that you had government benefiting directly from. Uh, from a gambling enterprise, you know, there was a Great Depression, and then they had revenue, and they decided to do that. And then you can really draw a line from there to the legalization of lotteries, and then the expansion of casino gambling, riverboat gambling in the in the Midwest. You know, you have. Uh, uh, so I, I think it's very hard to say. You know, one form of gambling is is okay, and another form isn't. You know, once you've legalized. Yeah, you know, there's some states that have casinos and they have lotteries, a lottery or Powerball, uh, racetracks, dog racing. It just becomes very hard to say. Okay, well, we we legalize all these forms of betting, but this one we can't do. It, right. it, it just it, it really it really undercuts their argument. So I, I agree. I think it's the genie is out of the bottle in that case. Listeners, we're going to cut away. We'll be back after a quick break. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-297-9788. 800-297-9788. Hey, this is Dave Weishaddle from House of Cards with your House of Cards gaming report for the week of January 11th, 2021. Twelve of Pennsylvania's 13 casinos reopened this past week. The properties were able to open up their gaming floors and allow up to 50% occupancy while adhering to social distancing recommendations and mask requirements. Only Rivers, Philadelphia remained closed through January 15th because of a city order. The South Dakota Commission of Gaming reported a new state record for gaming handle in November. According to the report, the year-over-year gaming handle for Deadwood Casinos increased by 13.3%, an all-time high for the state. Slot machine handle increased over 15% from November of 2019. However, table games fell over 11% from this time last year. And finally, the Poker Hall of Fame has announced its one and only inductee for 2020. Huckleberry Seed, a four-time WSOP bracelet winner, was the 59th individual to be inducted. Huck also won the 1996 World Series of Poker Main Event Championship and has cashed over $7.6 million in his tournament career. From all of us at House of Cards, congratulations, Huck. Have any news or tips regarding casinos, gaming, or legislation? Send us an email at newsroom at houseofcardsradio.com and follow us on Twitter at HOC Radio. You're listening to the House of Cards. Okay. 
Let's play some damn cards. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to House of Cards. This is Ashley Adams, your host. We're talking with David Clary, who is the author of Gangsters to Governors, The New Bosses of Gambling in America. I know that you have admiration for the former Iowa governor that you mentioned and how they did it uh, in Iowa. Can you maybe pull from the book and give us an example of uh, the other side of the coin about how gambling and the connection of governors to gambling and state authorized gambling can work very badly yeah i think the, the one governor that uh who's i think has really stumbled is um governor uh, chris christie in new jersey uh he, he came into office i think in 2009 and he he was uh, on a mission to make to make atlantic city great again uh and he uh <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, Atlantic City, as your listeners might know, it, it, it's been in a period of decline. Uh, Pennsylvania, a neighboring state, has legalized casinos. There's a casinos in Philadelphia and, and casinos in suburban Philadelphia. And that's, that, that has really undercut uh, severely uh, Atlantic City. Uh, and so when Christie took office, you know, they took the, the governors, uh, the state took over the, the PR agency that uh, that ran Atlantic City. You know, they gave money, uh, funds to uh, help build a hotel called Ravel, which uh, was was open for a very short time and is is closed. Uh, and uh, it, it just it really just feel like putting a lot. He's put a lot of effort into trying to revive something that can't be revived, and a lot of a lot of the state's prestige and a lot of state uh, f- focus on something that. Is uh, is not uh, it, it's just never going to be what it was. I mean, Atlantic City was was hot in the 1980s because it was the only place in, in the East Coast where you could bet in a casino legally. Uh, but now there's just there's so many other alternatives that there's no reason to go to Atlantic City to to play a play a, in a casino. So I, I think he's one he's one governor. I think who's who's just not not handled uh, handled it very well. Did you try to set up a meeting with him? I did. I, I tried uh, uh, very persistently to uh, to uh, to get an interview with him, and uh, he, he uh, his people just uh, didn't didn't reply. And I, I had a feeling he didn't reply because he, he think he knew he probably knew what the question was going to be like, and he didn't want to uh, he didn't want to uh, respond. But uh, what one great thing about uh, you know the internet world is you can see you can watch these politician speeches from five years ago and see what they said then. And that's actually more revealing than trying to, you know, hearing the spin of, I mean, okay, well, I, I didn't really mean to do it this way and it didn't turn out the way I wanted and so-and-so was in my way. So, uh, so you can, you can, it's actually better in some cases like this to look back at what did they say when Gravel was going to open and what, you know, all those claims about how it would be the greatest hotel and it'd be, it would, they would revive Atlantic city and it'd be, uh, uh, it'd be wonderful, and so you. So in a way, it's better just to use their use their own words and let, let that speak for themselves. I know. I I went down and visited it uh, four days before they closed, and it. Oh, was, really? Yes, I was there to play poker. The poker room had closed uh, much before wow. my visit. I I did not know that, but I found it out when I got there, and it was one of the saddest uh, experiences I had had in the gambling world because the location is outstandingly beautiful. It overlooks the Atlantic Ocean. The building itself from the outside is is maje- I mean, dark black uh, glass, uh, huge windows, huge lobby. Uh, is, uh, the escalators going up uh, dramatically. One of the most incredible buildings I've seen in the gambling world, and there are lots of incredible buildings, and yet it was ghastly empty. Uh, you, oh, yeah. There it, it, yeah. it was nothing going on. There were, there were staff. I imagine they had been contracted. There were staff everywhere. Uh, there were some guests of the hotel that were checking out or checking in. But 
in the casino area, there was nothing. It was dark. It was just horrible. And I knew that it was the most expensive. I think when it was built, it was the most expensive uh, construction in the history of gambling. Billion, a one or two billion dollars uh, it cost. To yeah, have I think that. it was uh, two, $2.4 billion. Yeah, uh, yeah. And here it and, was uh, virtually yeah. empty and closing. And I don't know what's become of it. I mean, are they, they going to turn into a 7-Eleven or something? Uh, a condo, maybe? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. But... Yeah, yeah. The amazing. It was two point four billion dollars, uh, and it opened in two thousand twelve, and then it closed uh, a couple years later, and it was sold to a, uh, a property investor for eighty two million dollars. So, you, so just think about <laughs> a project that cost two point four billion was sold for eighty two million. That's that's not, that's not a real good uh, investment. Not a, not a good return on your investment. <laughs> Um, and, but and the state was instrumental in building it. It wouldn't have been built without the state. And they they provided a, a big package of tax credits that got the cranes going and got it constructed. So that that's and that's an example of just a really bad bet. And uh, that's right. And, that, and then a bunch of casinos closed in Atlantic City. That, that uh, along with Ravel that year, um, it was the, the market is just oversaturated. There just were too many casinos for the number of for the demand. Right. And, and not just Atlantic City. You have Delaware. You have all the rooms in Pennsylvania exactly. now that are you know, clearly going to be more convenient for those, especially slot players. I mean, I suppose if you're looking for a weekend away, uh, there's an appeal to going to Atlantic City. But if you're just looking for your daily slot action, why travel down there when you can stop at parks or go to, you know, Harris in uh, in Chester or whatever? There are tons, you know, uh, Delaware Park, uh, et cetera. So anyway, I guess yeah, Delaware is Delaware's been very aggressive with uh, with, with uh, gambling, right? And you know, New York State is coming online. There are new, new casinos State. in New York State. Uh, Connecticut's expanding. Rhode Island has Twin River. Massachusetts is coming online in the West and in the East. It's it's going to be a very very competitive world. It already is. So I guess my question for you is, what do you think is going to happen with this Supreme Court decision? And is it along ideological lines, or does it really split uh, based on individual preferences? Yeah, it's uh, you know I, I, I kind of consider gambling almost a bipartisan issue. It's one of our, maybe our last one of our last bipartisan issues because you look at I mean look at Chris Christie's a Republican and he's a very aggressive at, at expanding gambling, and Andrew Cuomo is a Democrat. He's very aggressive at expanding casino betting. Yes. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't really see it as uh, as a you know an ideological or, or a political decision. I mean, it's it's, it's hard. To, it's just always hard to guess what the court's going to do. Uh, uh, but I, I do. I could see the court saying, you know, well, there's a you know, there's, <laughs> look at New Jersey. They've got all these forms of betting already. Uh, New Jersey is a state that's bringing the case that uh, sued the uh, leagues and the Justice Department. So. So the, the case began with New Jersey. So I can see the justice just saying, well, it's, you know, they, they already offer gambling and all these, they've offered it for years and it's, there's a state lottery. So what, you know, again, why, why would, why is it, why, why is it wrong for them to offer a sports book or offer a single game betting? Um, so I, I, I could see them, if I had a, if I had a bet, I'd say they probably will say it's, it's let, allow the state to decide, uh, whether to offer uh, uh, sports betting. I think I, that, that's, that'd be my my bet is that they would just say that gambling is so prevalent uh, in in our country. Certainly since 1992, when that law was passed, it's 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 been a I mean it's been a revolution in gambling. So I I, I could see uh, I could see the court letting that go, letting letting states enter it. And I think there's already a bunch of there's already a dozen or so states that are they're, they're ready with le- legislation. So once the uh, if a decision comes down that uh, supports the state's rights to uh, offer it, they're, they're ready to go and they're ready to pass that. So you'll see that you'll see that happen very quickly if, Absolutely. Um, if the case comes down the way that that would be huge. Will. That would be enormous. I mean, that would absolutely change the landscape because people now billions and billions of dollars are spent in sports betting, but they're all spent with offshore, uh, online, or right. illegal sites, and that will all flow, I would think, to the most convenient source, which would be the nearby casino or 
maybe not even a casino. Maybe you'll have what they have in England, which mm-hmm. are just betting parlors uh, where you can go down and right, place, right. you know, a hundred bucks on the Giants to win, a hundred bucks on the Raiders, whatever. Uh, it will change it completely. And I, you know, I frankly think that would be a positive thing. But we'll have to see. Hey, uh, before we go, I want to make sure you give mm-hmm. your website so that people that want to purchase gangsters to governors can do so. Oh, great. Yeah, it's uh, if, if you want to check out more about the book, I've got an excerpt uh, and a little overview and a little bit more about me. It's uh, www.davidclaryauthor.com. And the book is uh, officially going to be published on October 30th, but it's available on you know all the typical online sources. Amazon is being published by Rutgers University Press, so it's available there. Uh, BarnesandNoble.com, and it'll be in some bookstores as well. That's great. How did you get Rutgers to do this? Did you already have a relationship with them? No, it was uh, I uh, my literary agent. Uh, Shopped around the book and sent it, sent it to a bunch of uh, publishers, uh, commercial presses and uh, academic presses. And uh, Rutgers uh, was the most interested in it, and they uh, they they were they were excited about the book from the from the get go. And uh, so they, I think, it just fits in with you know they're from New Jersey, and New Jersey is you know a very important state in gambling history and gambling uh, present day as well. And I think they had some titles that that had looked at, uh, you know, gangsters and organized crime. So it just seemed to, to fit their list very well. So they uh, they uh, they took it on. Terrific! And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Well, David, I wish you uh, bestseller status and uh, sequels up the yin yang. Uh, it's been very pleasant talking to you, gangsters to governors, the new bosses of gambling in America. I appreciate you sharing your time with us, David. Oh, thank you so much, Ashley. Okay, take care. All right, thank you. That was David Clary, Gangsters to Governors, the new bosses of gambling in America. We're going to take a quick break, so stay tuned. for adult products at adamandeve.com. They've got massage oils, lingerie, and lots more we can't mention here. Use offer code SPICE404. They'll give you 50% off almost any one item, three free DVDs, free mystery gift, and free shipping. That's 50% off, free shipping, and more. Private shopping starts at adamandeve.com. Now that we're home more than ever, we need to feel safe. Call it a sign of the times or the world we now live in. What do you want to keep safe? The people in your life? What do you want to protect? Your possessions? The things that belong to you? The things that you've worked hard for? Wouldn't it be nice to have tested, trusted, 24-7 protection? Peace of mind, real protection that's always there for you and your whole family? Well, now you can with one of our state-of-the-art home security systems. Everyone thinks their home is safe until the unexpected happens. Help protect your home and loved ones today with the affordable next generation in home security. To help keep your family and property safe, call 1-800-520-4068 now. Representatives are standing by to assist you. That's 1-800-250-4068. 1-800-520-4068. 
You're listening to House of Cards. The answer is probably uh, we're finished. What, we're what, given, what are the we're odds? Very, One in a hundred? What, what? Uh, I don't do odds. We would. I gave very you ran detailed. You casinos, sir. Back to House of Cards, Dave Weishado with you. You know, sports betting has become popular in the U.S., and people want to know what's going on in the sports books across this country. So back by popular demand, executive producer Doug Weishado is back with the book report to tell us what's going on in the sports books across the country. Doug, what do you got? All righty. In this first book report of the year, we're going to be talking some state records, uh, some uh, new launches, as well as some legislation, and I even got a Barkley bet, Charles Barkley. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he uh, he's connected with some sports book. What, what sports? Yeah, book but is this is this is just a he's with Fandle. He's with Fandle. But this is just him being Barkley. Oh, okay. Barkley being has Barkley. Nothing to do with Fandle. Okay. No, this is just him. All right. And we got some legislation to talk about too. All right. Uh, Nevada released their numbers uh, towards the end of the year uh, last year. They uh, had a very good month. End of uh, December yep. here. Uh, they had a six hundred nine point four million dollar handle, like we discussed in exit one of uh, Turnpike here. Um, that's down 7.7% month over month from the state record, which was in October, of a $660 million handle. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. $501.8 million, or 82% of that, was bet on football in November. Okay. Didn't they have a record, though? Yeah, the $59 million okay. uh, hold, which was 11% hold, by the way, oh, okay. is the record Wow. Okay. for betting so on football in Nevada. That's what led me to say they had a good month. Yes. Okay. Uh, first time their hold has topped ten percent overall for all of sports betting since past in PASPA. Really, they've never hit ten percent until this past November. Very interesting. So uh, mo- mobile market share, which was more interesting, I thought, didn't do anything. It was flat from month to month. Not yeah. much change in it terms of. It didn't lose. Of, it didn't gain. No, it same was amount pretty... of people were doing it. All right. It's just interesting to note that Nevada is still one of the few ones that has a in person registration requirement on the book still. I can't believe they're going to keep that. I don't know. I mean, I, just, I you know, they kept it through a pandemic, you know, I, uh, but I still can't believe that they want that on the books, but whatever. Well, one of the other states that has the in-person registration has now removed it okay. permanently. Who is that? Iowa. Oh, they're going to have a big month. January 1st, yeah. they dropped the in-person registration All right. requirement in the state. And they were actually one of the bigger handle states as a matter of fact, in, as we talked about in, earlier in the show, Iowa was the seventh-ranked market. Okay. But I, Iowa was already a top-ten market anyway, even with the in-person registration on the books where people had to go and finish registering for an online sports book at a retail casino. They were actually doing very well. Top-ten market. Uh, they had accepted a single-month record of $87 million in handle in November. Now, we discussed that last week. Sure. And... What's going to happen here is they're going to see a, an influx of online sports books here because of each in, a retail casino can have three sports books, online sports book license, three yeah, skins. Called, yeah, they're called skins for uh, people in, in the know, in the business. They're and, called skins. What's, what's going on here is that opens it up into the, um, I, I don't want to say unknown sports books coming in, but you're going to see an influx of multiple sports books coming in. They're anticipating maybe a dozen new ones <laughs> Wow! <laughs> that would be launching the the, uh, the first day this is happening. Again, we'll get into this next week whenever, when the dust settles. Because sure, right now, they just dropped the registration. They had a whole bunch of things launch. Uh, it's got, it, basically, they're looking at it as a brand new relaunch of the sports betting market in Iowa. I got to tell you, I, Iowa is going to be a big player in the sports betting industry in the U.S. I mean, it, it's going to be huge. Well, they were top 10 with I mean, the in-person. It's, it's gonna, it's now gonna it's going to be, be even bigger. I, I mean, it's going to be bigger. I just wonder if it's going to get into the top five. It, it might. I, I mean, mean, you have Illinois, Nevada, New Jersey. That's top three right there. Uh, Colorado is going to break into the top five, too, at some point. Sure, sure. So Iowa is maybe a smaller market. Yeah, but I, th- I think to... I, Iowa's going to make some moves. I, uh, I look look at Iowa. Uh, another market, like we talked about earlier, a top ten market was New Hampshire. Yeah, it's well, New Hampshire is number ten, right? New Hampshire was number ten. Yeah, I, I never think of New Hampshire when I talk of big sports betting markets, but you know, because they only have one sports book operator there, one online sports book. Yeah, I mean, what is that? Uh, DraftKings. DraftKings. Well, according to Governor Sununu, 
because he loves tweeting this stuff out. Uh, after their first year of sports betting, they have over three hundred million dollars wagered. They they have a year to date handle of three hundred million. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's even before December's numbers come out. Wow. Uh, they've had over ten million dollars from the sports betting uh, market being given to the public education system. Great, great. Because it's run by the lottery up there, New Hampshire Lottery. I mean, that's what sports betting's for. It's for state government and the essential services that governments provide to people. I mean, it's you know, it's not just the sports book operators making tons of money. It's the state making tons of money. Well, they also threw out a couple of little tidbits, too. And uh, there'll, there'll probably be more of these coming out little by little. Now, the, these things are just in New Hampshire. These, this is just New Hampshire. The most bet on game was Super Bowl 54. Okay, makes sense. It was a good game, too, by the way. Sure. Uh, most bet on player, this is this makes perfect sense for the region, Mookie Betts. He's still very popular in New England, even yeah. though he's uh, playing in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I, I, I think <laughs> a lot of New, Mookie Betts fans. New England loved Mookie Betts. They didn't, want, they didn't want the, the Sox last, to get rid of him. It's appropriate for his last name, too. The uh, most bet on player is Mookie Betts. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, look. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of. Well, you know, that's like with uh, Jerome Bettis. Oh, uh, with, yeah. with, with, with uh, Bet Rivers. Yep. So, didn't even look at that one, Mookie Betts. But, yep, yeah, most bet on player. I wonder who the second one was. Got to be a basketball player, maybe, because, really, I don't see too many people loving the Sox lately. Uh, just listening to Boston Sports Radio, they they seem to be following closely and watching every game that Tom Brady plays. Didn't even and think I that. Mean, I mean, I, w- I would think uh, people in New Hampshire and all over New England, I like the only other New England state that has sports betting is in Rhode Island. And soon I, to be Connecticut, they're I, saying. And I'm very curious to see how many people have bet on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady. And Gronkowski. Yeah, there you go. There's T- another the, one. Very the player pop- props there. Very popular player still in New England. Well, we're going to move over down the coast a little bit to Washington, D.C. Uh, William Hill, uh, everyone has been following William Hill in, in D.C. because they have the temporary sports book at the Capitol Arena. Sure, sure. The Capitol One Arena, I'm sorry. And they have now launched the William Hill app. Wow, okay, good. To go along with the temporary retail book there. I use the William Hill Sportsbook app all the time here in New Jersey. Well, it's if great. you don't live within two blocks of the stadium, you can't use it. Wow, two blocks, huh? That's you... that's that's the licensing I... structure that is in D.C. The if technology not... now is absolutely amazing. The geolocation has come such a long way from when New Jersey started online uh, casinos in, in, uh, in 2013. I remember... I could play the casino games in my living room, but I couldn't play them in my bedroom because the geolocation was so screwed up. But now, my God, they have it down to two block well, radius. The only way you can, if, you, if you're not within the two block radius, the only thing, you can, the only application you can use to bet is Gambet DC. All right, that's the DC Lottery sports betting app run by uh, Intralot. But right now, the app is is you're able to use it in the stadium, or I'm sorry, in the arena since they don't call it a stadium, the Capital One Arena, two blocks around it. and But you also, if you're, if you're working in a federal building next to the arena, you can't use William Hill's app to bet if you're in the building. That's how specific the geolocation wow. is. Wow, okay. Yeah, there's, there's no way you can actually use it in a federal building. Gambit you can use. Oh, all right. Okay. But you can't use the non-DC approved app, or I guess the non-DC state or district Oh, app. all right, okay. Uh Basically, this is a Class A sports betting license for William Hill. It's re- the license reserved for the facilities where the sports teams are and the arenas. Mm-hmm. So everything Ted Leonsis basically owns okay. in D.C. You can have a sports betting app. Now, I'm curious to see if someone tests out that geolocation. You know, they got to be. And, they you know, be. I wonder if they'll mark it down. You can bet after this sign or something like that, you know? I'm more curious. Like a school zone. You know, it should be a bet zone. I'm real, I'm more curious to see what happens when sports betting uh, companies like Handle 19, which is going to be a local D.C. sports betting company, uh-huh. launches. Oh, okay. Because it's going to be retail. It's going to be in a bar, in a okay. restaurant. That's interesting. Okay. It's that, and they're having trouble. They got their, they've gotten their license approved. They're having trouble with the neighborhood, and they're attacking the liquor license. All right. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with Handle 19. Uh, Who's co- attacking the liquor license? The neighborhood. Okay. Oh, weird. Because right. they can't fight the they can't fight the sports betting license. He got it. All right. But part of the the entire structure is the three story structure he's planning: restaurant, bar, and sports book. Oh, okay. So that really depends upon the uh, alcohol being served there as well for All it right. to succeed. 
Uh, moving over into some legislation, uh, we got some interesting states throwing in some sports betting legislation. These happened at the end of 2020 here. They're going to be considered for the next legislative sessions in these states. South Carolina finally introduced a sports betting bill. Actually, three bills. Wow, okay. And this is kind of indicative of how a state would go about creating legalized sports betting. It's, I mean, it's going to be interesting to watch this. Three bills. One bill is going to permit sports betting in the state and would allow wagers for uh, and will allow for wagers to be made on horse racing and pro games. All right. Uh, right now, everything's illegal in South Carolina. Uh, they they have no casinos, no. right? No. Okay. Uh, another bill that's been formed. It's in conjunction with this. It will form a committee and begin researching the fiscal data. And then the third bill is one to amend the state constitution to make sports betting legal. Okay. So they've got a that's an uphill little, battle. They've got a lot of work yeah, to do, but yeah. those three in conjunction show you exactly what certain states have to go through. It'll be interesting to see how quickly they pass it. They're anticipating this passing quickly wow. because of what happened with the pandemic. States and a lot of states are in desperate need of uh, revenue. Sure, sure. So I think Makes sense. In, in some ways, a horrible thing happened with the pandemic. In, in another sense, this is actually spurring economic growth in areas like sports betting and iGaming. Over in Florida, sports betting is back on the docket for them. A uh, bill for legalizing sports betting was introduced at the end of the year, and this would be for the uh, legislative session beginning in March of this year. Okay. Uh, it would create a uh, division inside the state lottery to oversee sports wagering licensing, and they would also create an outline of options for sports wagering while also limiting who can participate in sports wagering in the state. Right now the list includes athletes, coaches, referees, and people working with the sports governing bodies. Okay, makes sense. So, I mean, logical way to go. Yep, yep. And again, the other the other state that threw in some legislation was Alabama. Alabama does not have any gambling whatsoever. Okay. Nothing is legal except the tribal casinos. All right. Uh, they uh, have a gambling study which shows that the casinos could generate up to uh, four hundred million in handle, which would also turn in about ten million dollars in tax revenue okay. to the state. All right, that's what they're looking at—that ten million dollars. Sure. That's a monthly revenue statement. Uh, they don't even have a lottery legal, so they got to create a lottery first if they want to have this kind of stuff done. Alabama doesn't have lottery. Does not have a lottery. Wow. Okay. Maybe they should get lottery first and then uh, take baby steps. You know, one of the five states that do not have state lotteries. Okay, I did not know that. Alaska. All right. Hawaii. Utah, and Nevada. Nevada doesn't have lottery. Nevada does not I have never a legal state lottery. I've, yeah, I've been to Nevada lots of times and Las Vegas lots of times. I never played the lottery. I just assumed they had it. And finally, for this week's book report, our Barkley being Barkley uh, statement. He, on the air, told his uh, TNT crew in that pregame show he does mm -hmm. um, that he was going to be betting $100,000 for the Portland Trailblazers to win the Western Conference. Wow, okay. He did that on the air, didn't tell anyone he was going to do it until he said it. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, well, he's not been a great better. Uh, he uh, said that the uh, Warriors would never win an NBA title. Okay. That was before they won three of five. <laughs> okay. And um, they also last year uh, predicted that the Blazers, I don't know why he's focused on the Blazers, but the Blazers would beat the Lakers in the first round of the playoffs, then go to the NBA Finals, and then, uh, you know, he actually announced this bet before the home opener for the Blazers, where they lost to the Jazz by 20 points. Okay. So take that one with a grain of salt. Well, that'll do it for us this week on House of Cards. If you go into one of the newly reopened casinos, poker rooms, or sports books, please be safe. We'll see you next time on House of Cards. Build a house of cards around the lovers.